Hey, look at this interesting development, right? Look at this interesting development. I happened to stumble across Mr. Potato Head himself, Eric Griffin's page, and look what's occurred. It looks like the big man got married, yeah, finally, right? You know, he's always moaning and crying on his fucking podcast about something. So now I guess he's happy about getting married, hopefully. He's probably going to be moaning and crying about that soon anyway, regardless. But happy congratulations to him. He got, you know, for looks by looks of it, he got engaged to this lady here. So, you know, congrats. Big up, big up. But the f- interesting part of it, the interesting part of it for me, aside from him looking like a mixed race Kentucky Fried Chicken guy, Right, <laughs> he looks like the the one plant, the one mixed race plantation owner. Apart from that, is this picture here? This is a very interesting picture, isn't it? Right? Why is this picture interesting? This picture is interesting because I remember there was a clip that went around. Um, I think it was a clip taken from I'm gonna say King of the Sting. Eric Griffin was on it. And I, of course, incorrectly, many, many, many months ago, predicted that Eric Griffin would get kicked on there, kicked off of there because he's not cool, he's not funny, and people don't tend to have as much respect for him in the community scene. It feels like as other people. I don't know why, but it is what it is. But for every reason, that didn't transpire, and he's on the show now. So success, congratulations, do your thing. But I remember there was a clip on there where Eric Griffin said something in passing, like, oh, I can't wait until my wedding because it's going to be funny, to see all the drama that's been going on and see how people interact or something. And I think it was around the same time all the stuff was happening with the whole drug walk thing with Annie Liederman and Brendan. Did he or didn't he do it? And I remember look, looking at that crit thinking, bruv, like, you're a grown-ass man. This is like, I don't know, not to be mean or anything, but it seems like this might be his first girlfriend, right? <laughs> He's getting married, right? It's a big day. And he's legitimately thinking about drama between his friends about some nonsense online. Like, what are you doing, bruv? Like, focus on your fucking big day. Do you know what I mean? Like, get right. Do you know what I mean? Whatever. I, it did really sit right. I think well, that's a weird comment to make. But then it also is funny because part of the reason why it's a bit interesting to watch all this whole debacle happen between, you know, Bobby Lee, Kalila, Brendan, all that stuff, and the comedy scene, all this sort of shit, has been because clearly... There is camps um, in that scene, right? There are little cliques and whatever it may be. And maybe Rogan's um, influence, even though he's not there anymore, is still felt because of the people that he put on and the people that he co-signed and the people that got on his show and the people that he promoted and put on his showcase, whatever it may be. To the point where people feel as if they can't be honest about how awful what Brendan was allegedly had might have done was... Do you know what I mean? They can't just be honest and say, yeah, that was kind of fucked up. So they kind of have to dance around it. And obviously, because they have to dance around it, it means that if you're Eric and you've got a wedding coming up, you can't exactly not invite Brendan because he essentially pays your rent. Do you know what I mean? Because he employs you on King of the Skin. King of the Skin, King of the Skin, whatever, you, whatever the fucking show's called. But then you also can't, you know, not invite Bobby because Bobby's your guy. I mean, he's a guy that he was crying over because he didn't do the show with him and stuff. You know, they clearly got a weird relationship, but they're clearly close. But because of that whole weird, we can't say what we feel because he's Drogon's friend thing, I felt they were just going to let it ride and let it happen and just thought, you know what, fuck it, let's just just invite both of them, see how it goes down. But clearly, someone made the executive's decision and it looks like the Big Brown was not at the wedding, mate. Big Brown wasn't there. So he made an effort to fucking attend... Andrew Schultz's wedding because he knew Joe Rogan was coming, right? <laughs> it was fucking bizarre, to say the least. Um, but he didn't have the time to pop down and, you know, to attend for Eric Griffin's wedding. Even though Eric Griffin did a really touching, I thought, speech at the end of that. What was it? Was it special? No, was it that kind of big, you know, that video they did where he was crying over something? I thought Eric Griffin did a really good speech in terms of, you know, speaking about how he hated Brendan at first and then he later on found out that, it, you know, he didn't hate him because he pays him and because he pays him on time. <laughs> well, I thought that was a very interesting thing because this might speak for the overall change in atmosphere and in um, temperature out there in LA. Now that Big Daddy Rogan's gone, 
they're able and they're brave enough, all these men here, right? all these men, all these testosterone-filled men, all these alphas are now capable of standing up to Big Brown because Joe Rogan's not around anymore to kind of intimidate and bully them from the sides. I mean, very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. And you reckon Joe Rogan's probably, what, shorter than Bobby Lee? And he has this outsized influence on all these men. Flipping crazy, isn't it, right? That's why when people say, or when I say he's a male Oprah, I think that's probably doing him a disservice, man, because my man's moved to Austin. He's in Texas now. He's setting up a whole club there. He's completely moved his operations, you know, everything. His entire life, and he's still got this outsized influence on his people. But yeah, Brenda not being at a wedding was a bit interesting, isn't it? But not not surprising either. Maybe he just decided himself to be like, you know what, I'm not going to go. It's going to be weird and awkward anyway. You know, look, it's, it's, a, it's definitely an LA wedding, isn't it? Guys are going to weddings with beanie hats on and shit. I mean, wearing slip-ons and blazers. It's just like, one day you can't just wear a pair of shoes, no? One day? No, just not one day you wear a pair of shoes? All good, I guess, isn't it? Who's standing on the tiptoes? No one? Of course he had to turn up in all white, in it? <laughs> but yeah, man, but yeah, you know, look, it is what it is. Let's, well, is there pictures of the actual wedding? Yeah, they look cute. Bless them. Oh, Fingy did the, 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 the nuptials, Rick. Amazing. Okay, that's pretty cute. That's pretty nice. Well done to the both of them. Imagine if they would have let Brendan attend this event after everything that happened, man. All the drama going on, your special day, your one special day, married, you know what I mean? To the love of your life, you're going to start a family together, so a whole new chapter, and you're allowing all that drama to happen. You can't be allowing that to happen, innit? Um, what's he saying here? There's that moment where you have to wait. I know, that. all right. Well, it's crazy because all the people that the people would want to see are already gone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Santino, Bob. Yeah. Like that, yeah. Okay, cool. Then we're not going to see the video then, are we, mate? What's this video here? Carry home. What's he doing here? That's nice. That's cute. Congratulations to them anyway. I'm going to play. I don't want to get struck down. Congratulations to them. It's good to see some love. It's good to see. You know what's actually good to see? You know what's good to see? It's actually good to see somebody. This is me being for real now. It's actually good to see a stand-up comedian, right? Who legitimately looks like he's in love with his wife. Like, Eric fucking loves this woman. He talks about her so much on the pod. He's always talking about her. Rachel this, Rachel this, Rachel that, Rachel that. Maybe because, you know, she's clearly a smoke show and stuff. But they generally have a love and appreciation for each other. Clearly. Do you know what I mean? And it's nice to see somebody who clearly, clearly loves their spouse, wants to spend their t life, because I, I don't think they've even been together for a long time, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think they've been in a relationship for a while, and he popped the question very quickly, so he knew. I mean, this is this is for me. Uh, this is this is forever. So big up them, because he clearly loves her. Um, they clearly really love. They clearly want to be together for the rest of their lives, and it's refreshing to see, because we hear too many of these fucking comedians complaining about their wives, acting as if they're fucking... You know, I don't know, man, the most awful people in the world because they dare to ask them to go on a holiday together or to maybe go out on a date night or to maybe not go on tour for another weekend. Like, these, honestly, some of these wives in stand-up comedy and the wives and girlfriends, man, honestly, they're the most abused people within that community. It says, you know, I honestly, honestly do think that. So big up Eric Griffin, big up Rachel. And, you know, may they, may they breed into the sunset into the nightfall i don't know i don't know you know what i mean you know what i mean anyway let's continue let's continue let's continue let's continue let's continue um oh yeah delia was there someone said Dilla. delia was there wasn't he yeah delia was there he actually was there he is big old dd Dee Dee. chrissy d there he is okay anyway Anyway, let's move on. Let's move 